Meanwhile, let's chase how explains tonight. Some fear this is just the beginning of what could be the worst hurricane season yet. Don Hurricane Fiona is just the second hurricane of the year and has caused significant damage, as you just said. Well, one woman I spoke to says her family is living without power and water to drink. The Puerto Rican flag has flown proudly every day outside of this Puerto Rican restaurant in Ontario. On this day, the flag flies in solidarity with people there suffering in the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona. In Puerto Rico, this couple sings a hymn about resilience as they sit in the dark following the aftermath of Hurricane Fiona. So they are completely without power or water right now as we speak. It is still raining. The amount of rain has been devastating. There's a lot of flooding, which is the worst thing about this hurricane. Sierra has been hearing the stories and seeing the videos, including from her own parents. This generator standing between them and complete darkness. The power grid is uh, still not fully recovered even before the hurricane season started. Sierra's family lived through Hurricane Maria that devastated the territory in 2017. That hurricane causing more than 3,000 deaths and dumping as much as 40 inches of rain. After a while, there was no medicine, there was no pharmacies, there was no doctors. They both have, you know, health problems. They're older. When I went to get them after Maria, they were in pretty rough shape. They were hauling water. They lost so much weight. They were not healthy at all. Sierra now works at her restaurant serving up Puerto Rican food, worried about what's to come as hurricane season has just begun. It's really hard when things like this happen and you're so far away. Um, so it's just a sense of there's not much I can do, but when it's time, I'll be there. And Sierra tells me her parents are safe. They took precautions before Fiona turned into a hurricane by stocking up on water and hurricane proofing their home. And now to the continuing staffing crisis in New York group homes. A Canandaigua mother is reaching out to the state for help. She received notice in July that her daughter would be moved out of the group home where she's lived for 25 years. And as Cheyenne Walker reports, the plan is to put her in a nursing home. Yes, Jenny, at least 23 group homes have been closed in the Finger Lakes area due to staffing shortages, leaving residents displaced and families concerned. Wendy Welch learned in July that her 50-year-old disabled daughter Jennifer will soon be moved out of her group home and into a nursing home. The reason? Lack of staff. What they're saying is they don't, they can't get the nursing staff. But what they're also saying is they're trying to find beds in private agencies for, you know, the people that they're moving out of their own medical um, group homes. Bearing a last minute change, Jennifer Welch will be forced to leave the only home she's known for 25 years. This is despite a plan to raise the pay of group home workers that was included in the latest state budget. The biggest is the promise of the 5.4% cost of living increase. It did pass. It is in the budget. Uh, those things take time. We have all the faith in the world that we'll be receiving those funds. Wendy Welch received a letter from the state explaining it will continue to take time to realize and fool the necessary gains needed to recover from severe staffing shortfalls. That's especially so in rural areas like Wyoming County, where Wendy's daughter lives. There are over 100 people today waiting for a caregiver, a matched caregiver who are living out in community, and we can't match the caregiver. Um, so everybody's feeling this. And I guess to families, um, hang in there, continue to advocate. And we did reach out to the governor's office today in the group home in Warsaw, but not hear back, but we have not heard back yet. 